Welcome to My Smart Tech TV. My name is Jess and I'm your host. And today we're going to be chatting to Michael Doherty, who is the head of business development at Smarter City Solutions. So let's welcome Michael. Thank you so much for joining me today, Michael. I'm going to get you to start off by telling me a bit about you and your background. So I'm really a, a technologist that, that joins uh, technology and business together. I've uh, held roles in uh, the software industry and the IT industry. And about uh, nine years ago, I found myself in the parking industry introducing a uh, pay, payment app or a pay by phone, as it, as it was called back then, uh, application on smartphones to, to Australia and, and to uh, parking authorities around the nation. I've uh, moved between a few different organisations yeah. and um, currently I'm in my second stint at Smarter City Solutions, which was previously known as Cello Park Australia. Um, and, and yeah, I've really uh, come to know and understand the role that parking plays uh, in the intelligent transport, in transportation space and also, um, you know, how that, how that dovetails into the Smarter Cities discussion that seems to be happening all over the globe. I'm sure you, having worked in that space for such a while, you would have seen some incredible changes over the last um, over the last years. Tell me more about Smarter City Solutions. What do they do? So Smarter City Solutions, uh, a number of years ago, pivoted from uh, introducing a, a, a parking-related app that motorists would use to, uh, to start and stop a parking session to become a, a software development house, a, a vendor in our own right. So nowadays we bring together a suite of different solutions. Um, there's three core offerings that are developed uh, right here in Sydney, Australia. And then we're very proud of our ability to integrate um, complementary technologies and other, other solutions, which often involves the, the organization's legacy backend technologies mm -hmm. and, and take that sort of present day contemporary uh, tech capability to what is really a very old fashioned industry. Yeah, and tell me, so you said you've got three offerings. Talk me through those three different offerings. Sure. So um, as I mentioned, the, 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 the client-facing solution is uh, still uh, called Cello Park, and it's very popular in both universities and municipalities around Australia. Obviously, universities are a great demographic for apps, and uh, there's, there's uh, often an underestimated parking uh, challenge inside some of these big campuses. So that's our, that's our first offering. Um, after, after engaging with uh, a couple of parking authorities around Australia, we realised that while we're identifying a vehicle by its licence plate through, through that, and, and we had integrated with licence plate recognition, we, we saw low hanging fruit in creating a virtual permit solution. So our second offering is called V Permit. And that's really for those motorists that come to the same place every day. They, they, they park five days a week at their workplace, for example. They may even require you know, a, a payment method that is salary sacrifice, uh, that sort of thing. So we've got a very powerful industry leading uh, virtual permit solution called V Permit, as I said, and that gets rid of stickers off windscreens and bits of paper off off of the uh, dashboard of a car. And the third, the third offering to, to really complete uh, the, the, the solution for the parking provider is, is called V Compliance. And that's again, taking that old fashioned business of uh, writing an infringement for someone who hasn't done the right thing and making it real time, leveraging the cloud, 4G, Bluetooth belt printer, photographs, uh, uh, real time integration into the, into the state government's uh, systems, that sort of thing. And are governments, the, are they like the main decision makers in transport projects? Are there other parties that are involved as well? Or is it typically, what's their involvement, I suppose, when it comes to transport projects? Yeah, so, so there's this interesting mix in, in the way the three levels of, of Australian governments work and your, your main roads, as you know, are, are often managed and, and catered for by the state. Um, major projects are sometimes funded by the federal government, but when it comes into the area of smart cities in which we operate, it's really local government um, that, that does the sign off. So um, the, the, the sales exercise and the marketing exercise for a business like us is, uh, is, is fairly full on because we've got to be uh, keeping our finger on the, on the pulse of a lot of different com um, you know, commercialization and procurement processes. And we've got to, uh, you know, to get that get that message out to to a lot of different uh, lower levels of government 
having said that, I think I think um, you know when we talk about smart cities and the sort of technologies that smarter city solutions offers, there's there's a role to play for state government, um, and, and and you know we can we can talk more about providing a platform and 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 creating some uh, consistency. I think is is the role for those higher levels of government. And I'm sure, and you know, with the like with anything i'm sure you're met you know some governments are very uh, open to change i'm sure some of them yeah more so than others how do you inspire or kind of innovate these um local governments to adopt these changes and to kind of um embrace technology when it comes to this? yeah sure and 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 i think um regardless of whether it's about technology or or any other change um councils are, are very much look at each other so um you know, proof of capability through some kind of case study, for example, is is very important in in that local government arena. Um, and, and as you've alluded to, there are individuals and decision makers out there that, that have an appetite for innovation. Um, and, and, and that's essentially a, a um, you know, a personality trait of the organisation, which often often flows from 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 leadership. Um, and, and yeah, there's there's um, decision makers that might, for example, be at the later stages of their career in local government. They've got a system in place that in, it involves parking meters and ticket machines and this old old fashioned stuff, but they don't see it as broken. So um, to, to answer your question about motivating them, I think it's about proving that A, it's what a motorist wants in a smart city these days, and B, it actually provides a lot of benefits and a lot of value to, to their organization to remove uh, friction in a, in a way that it's not been able to be removed previously. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned there, you know, that's what a, what a motorist wants. And how, you know, there's a lot of obviously friction often with motorists and what, what they experience with local, with, yeah, parking fines and, you know, things like, how do you remove that? How do you, how do you um, help the motorist feel, um, have a better experience when it comes to parking and, and, and transport in a city? Yeah, we, we as, as I alluded to, we we operate in a way that we're integrating a lot of different things, and the benefit for the for the motorist as an example, you know, to take this this drudgery, this this grudge purchase of paying for parking, heaven forbid, um, to 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 just make it a little bit more pleasant, a little bit easier. Um, you know, we can we can add information into the apps. We can get information to the the motorist smartwatch. Um, we can show them uh, through integrating with technologies such as um, you know vehicle detection cameras, in ground sensors, uh, license plate recognition systems, even off street boom gated car parks. We can show a motorist who's approaching you know the vicinity in which they want to they want to be for for that period of time in their day. What's available? What's mm -hmm. what's completely unavailable? Um, that's that's one example of communicating uh, through the technology. I think the very uh, mechanics or the act of not having to go back to the car and put that scrap of paper on the on the dashboard and slam the door and hope it doesn't flip off and all of that old fashioned stuff. Um, I think I think it just streamlines people's uh, movement to a point where their, their mobility should be should be almost invisible. Um, I see I see the provision of parking as a little bit like a, a utility that's delivered to to your to your building. Um, you should think nothing of it, and you only really think something of it when 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 it goes horribly wrong. Um, so yeah, if we're helping motorists develop habits, uh, get online to to apply for their permit through the local council pull out their smartphone to start and stop their parking session, um, you know, get, get communicated with through push notifications rather than pieces of paper. I think we're removing a lot of that, uh, you know, friction as we're calling it uh, for that, for that motorist. And so often, I mean, it's not like motorists go along around me like, oh, I just want to get loads of fines. Like of, often, you know, it's like people mm -hmm. don't realize and these things happen accidentally. And, you know, we yeah. um, certainly, um, yeah, alleviating some of that, um, those challenges will help uh, motorists have a much more enjoyable experience. Mm. So if, you know, let's say that Sydney, everybody, every single government took up these, these technologies, what would it, what would it look like? What would, um, it, you know, best case scenario, we could really uh, take this to the next level. What's, what would the smart city kind of look like in an ideal world? 
if I if I look to some of the the European cities that have been doing this sort of thing for a long time, um, the motorists do get a lot of that communication delivered to them while they're en route, be it on the on the navigation facility in their car, be it through their favourite app. And when they um, they get to their destination, again we're, we're talking about the parking element of intelligent transportation. Um, the motorist would typically in those European cities just use their favourite app. Um, it's, it's a little bit like, you know, do you want to navigate with Apple Maps or Google Maps or Waze? Um, at the destination, we're seeing that it's, there's a similar thing. Um, do, do you want to use Cello Park? Do you want to use something, something different from, from another provider? So I believe that the future is, is and, and the future starting now, is going to be um, scenarios like Mossman um, here in New South Wales. They're the first that I know of where there are two apps uh, operating uh, in that organisation, and um, they they have been very clever in the way that they integrate their permit system with the payment app, so that a local resident who might have a permit to park outside their home, when they drive down to the beachfront with their family and have a picnic at Balmoral Beach, the parking that they pay for away from their home but still inside that municipality is discounted. Oh, thanks to thanks to technology so oh. you know there's there's a forward thinking organization that's doing some integration stuff that's offering choice um and and i really see that as as moving forward and and uh yeah we're, we're, we're going to see more of that that's great and what about some of the chat like what challenges are you facing um when you're sort of trying to roll this out what are some of the challenges that you come across um one one really big challenge that's um, emerged in the last 18 or so months here in our home state of New South Wales is, is the state government um, doing something fairly interesting in so much as looking at, looking at our industry, uh, not paying a great deal of attention to an organisation in, in Sydney that, that delivers these parking technologies to Australia's largest municipality, Brisbane, for example. Um, seeing that there's a range of technologies and apps in this case on offer and then creating yet another app oh, no. and, and, and competing with us. Um, that's, that's, that's a real uh, challenge. It's, it's, it's uh, throwing the handbrake on our, our uh, sales pipeline development in the state of New South Wales. And really what I think the state government should be doing is facilitating what I just talked about before. And that's, you know, bringing platforms together Bringing, bringing different uh, technologies uh, in in such a way that they communicate and enforcement can take place seamlessly. Mm -hmm. It's it's happening elsewhere. It's it's something that we can do and others can do. And I think the government just needs to to engage with the parking yeah, the sector a bit better. Yeah, and you see this well, across many different organisations and different technology verticals where organisations try and create their own um, technologies when it's like this external companies that sometimes are there. You guys live and breathe this. So this is what you're, you know, your bread and butter. So it's, um, yeah, it's definitely good to let the experts do their thing sometimes. Mm -hmm. Let's um, talk about smart cities. Now, this obviously um, is, is part of a smart city. I'm just keen to know, like, what excites you about smart cities and the future because um yeah i remember years ago going to a conference and hearing a guy speak about um smart it's been like seven years ago speaking about smart cities and many of the things he spoke about are starting to come true and i think it's so exciting so yeah keen to know what what excites you about smart cities i i, I think it's it's the power of that information myself and and again as i said earlier just removing that friction you know tapping tapping onto public transport um, knowing ahead of time that the that the train's running late, the bus is running late. Knowing ahead of time that your normal um, car park, which might be a commuter car park, for example, for mm -hmm. some reason today is full, um, and and you know you might be better off driving one train station away from the city, which is which is not human nature, um, to to get a, a car space where there is plenty of availability, um, and then as I say, get out of the car. Don't even really have to do much at all um, to just get on, get on with your day. Head to the office, um, you know, get back, press stop, or or not. You know, we can even automate some of this stuff to the point where you drive out of a facility and and, and all the payments taken care of for you. So, yeah, yeah two two prong answer I think is one information and just how that can can make you as a as a person commuting and and as as a mobility user make more streamlined and efficient decisions and two um, just getting rid of some of that that drudgery you know 
heaven forbid, putting coins into a box. Um, yeah. yeah. Those days should be well behind us in a smart city. Yeah, little car thing with your coins in there, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm imagining right. it, it will create a city full of really happy people because everyone will be skipping through and, you know, no no problems or anything. Well, we should, <laughs> we should take it for granted, yeah. And I think, yeah. I think it really stands out when you go to some of these these cities where they they're not embracing the the the, the newer technology. Um, I remember, for example, just two years ago, catching a train. Um, it was out of out of New York. Um, I can't remember where I was heading. Now it's it like a, a thirty five minute train ride. Yeah, a, a conductor wearing a hat came through and clicked a hole in in the paper ticket that I that I'd purchased, yeah. so that later on they could see that it was used. And I was just I was flabbergasted. It's like wow, I, I was just so used to um, a, a higher tech solution than that. And how does Australia compare to the rest of the world in terms of these technologies? Are we? I think. Uh, I think we're kind of sitting sitting in the middle to to be honest um I've I've seen as I mentioned before there's this there's cities like Amsterdam where this stuff's quite advanced um there's cities like uh, Tel Aviv where I don't think they've ever had parking meters it's always been a technology based solution yeah. and then on the flip side I've I've been to um, innovation awards, you know, US based industry awards presentations where someone who put a huge number of single space bubblehead parking meters into a campus parking environment collected an innovation award and was like, well, hang on, what, what's going on here? Um, this is this is very old fashioned. So, um, yeah, and, and again, not to pick on the US, um, you know, the, the, inside that, org- that, that country, I should say, I've seen um, AI-based uh, technology where patrol cars know where they are through through cameras and recognising streets and, and that sort of thing. So you certainly get a, a, a wide gamut and a, a broad array of different levels of uptake and levels of smart city in different parts of the world. And I believe in Australia, we're, we're well on our way. We're, we're, we're midway through the, through the journey and... Um, yeah, it's exciting time. Exciting, very exciting. So what? Yeah. So just um, sort of, I suppose my last question would be, what? What's the call to action? Like, how would somebody um, sort of start their journey with using these types of technologies? Um, I think I think the the decision makers in those government organisations, especially, they they just need to arm themselves with information. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, if there's if there's an organisation that that is in the business of, of helping providers of, of, of these uh, government you know, facilities, let's call them. Um, you know, there's an organisation saying, oh, I've got something to show you. We really, we really need to uh, be having a conversation. I think that's, um, that's, that's one of the challenges in my role is essentially knocking on the proverbial door of government and saying, I'm, I'm not trying to uh, get the money out of your pocket, but I just want to bring you up to speed on what it is that we can now do nowadays. It's something that you may have not seen before. Government should should invest a little bit of time and just get, just arm themselves with what's possible. Mm-hmm. And I guess from the kind of consumer perspective, you need to move to Mossman if you want to experience the, you know, all the stuff you've got going on here. <laughs> yeah, V, v, v permit. It's it's yeah. actually picked up. Uh, it's picked up an award for us, so we're quite oh, we're, nice. we're, we're, we're quite lovely. proud of that. And that's yeah. yeah, again, as I said, that's a good example of an Australian city well on its way to 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 that smart city, you know, utopia. Love it. That's great. Well, thank you so much for your time, Michael. I really appreciate it. You got any anything else I've missed? Any sort of parting words that you wanted to say or? Anything like no, that? no, it's been it's been fantastic. Thank you uh, for having me. And um, yeah, if anyone wants to get in touch, I'm sure you'll share the details for Smarter City Solutions. Absolutely, we'll do that in the show notes as well. Great. Well, thank Brilliant. you so much, and yeah, have an awesome day. Thank you. Bye. Thanks again, Jess. Cheers.